This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. In Florida, a jury has found former Chilean Army officer Pedro Barrientos liable for the murder of legendary folk singer and activist Victor Jara in September 1973. In the days after dictator Augusto Pinochet seized power in a U.S.-backed coup, Victor Jara was rounded up, tortured and shot more than 40 times. In 2013, on the 40th anniversary of Victor Jara's murder, his wife and daughters filed a civil lawsuit in U.S. court against the former military officer Pedro Barrientos, who has lived in the United States for more than two decades and is now a U.S. citizen. The Jara sued him under a federal civil statute known as the Torture Victims Protection Act, which allows U.S. courts to hear hu about human rights abuses committed abroad. Chilean prosecutors have indicted Barrientos and another officer with Jara's murder, and Chile is seeking his extradition so he can be tried on criminal murder charges. Well, in a landmark legal victory Monday, an Orlando court ruled Barrientos is liable for the killing of Victor Jara and awarded the Jara family $28 million in damages. The Guardian newspaper called the verdict, quote, one of the biggest and most significant legal human rights victories against a foreign war criminal in a U.S. courtroom, unquote. In a moment, we'll be joined by Victor Hada's daughter and widow, Joan. But first, I want to turn to our 2013 interview with Joan Hada, talking about the day Victor disappeared. Oh, we were both at home with our two daughters. Uh, there was somehow um, a coup in the air. Uh, we had been fearing that there might be a military coup. Uh, and on that morning, uh, together, Victor and I listened to Allende's last speech and heard all the radios the, who supported Salvador Allende falling off the air, I see, one by one and being replaced by military marches. Victor was due to go to the Technical University, his place of work, where Allende was due to speak to announce a plebiscite at 11 o'clock. And Victor uh, was to sing there, as he did. And he went out that morning. It was the last time I saw him. I, I stayed at home, heard of the, the bombing of the Moneda Palace heard and saw the helicopters machine gun firing over Allende's residence, and then began the long wait for Victor to come back home. And how long did you wait? I waited a week, uh, not knowing really what had happened to him. I got a message from him, from somebody who had been in the stadium with him. Wasn't sure what was really happening to him, uh, but my fears were confirmed on the 11th of September. On the, I'm sorry, on the 18th of September, Chile National Day, when a young man came to my house, uh, said, "Please, I need to talk to you. I'm a friend. I've been working." in the city morgue, and I'm afraid to tell you that Victor's body has been recognized because it was a well-known face, was a well-known face. And he said, you must come with me and claim his body, otherwise they will put him in a common grave and he will disappear. So then I accompanied this young man to the city morgue. We entered by a side entrance. I saw the hundreds of bodies, literally hundreds of bodies that were high, piled up in, in what was actually the parking place, I think, of the, of the morgue. And I had to look for Victor's body among a long line in the offices of the city morgue, recognized him. I saw what had happened to him. I saw the bullet wounds. I saw the state of his body, and I consider myself one of the lucky ones in the sense that I had to face at that moment that what had happened to Victor, and I could give my testimony with all the force of what I felt in that moment, and not that horror, which is much worse, of never knowing 
what happened to your loved one, uh, as what happened to so many families, so many women who have spent these 40 years looking for their, lo their loved ones who were made to disappear. That's Victor Hara's widow, Joan Hara, speaking in 2013 on Democracy Now! She joins us live now from Orlando, Florida, along with Victor Hara's daughter, Manuela Bunster. And in San Francisco, we're joined by Dixon Osborne, executive director of the Center for Justice and Accountability, the law firm that represented the Hara family. Joan, let's begin with you. Your reaction on Monday to the court decision. But it was almost incredible. Uh, Joan, uh, if you could English. respond to the decision uh, in the court on Monday. Yes. Uh, well, I can only say it was with uh, happiness, uh, incredulity, Cassie. But we, we've lived with uh, all these years with gradually losing more and more the hope of justice for Victor. It was wonderful here in the United States, in an American court, to, to find this unanimous verdict. And uh, Manuela Bunster, you, uh, your reaction after so many years of finding some measure, or not full measure, but some measure of recognition and justice for what happened to your father? Uh, well, as, as Joan says, um, it's, uh, I think, I mean, for us, it's still difficult to way, really, uh, how this is going to uh, uh, affect our lives in the future, because, I mean, we've lived with the sense of impunity and a, a, a pain within, you know, in relation to the, the not, know it, not knowing the truth uh, of, of what happened with Victor. And, and so it's been... Um, we're still... I mean, we're happy but calm because also, I mean, there's a lot to do still, you know, in relation to justice for Victor and for other victims of the stadium. But, you know, we, we received it. Um, we're very grateful, really. Joan Hara, mm -hmm. how did you learn that it was Barrientos who was responsible for your husband for Victor Hara's murder? right in the midst of the coup of September 11th, 1973, in Chile? Yes, well, I, it has been only gradually. And uh, during this trial, I, I learned many things about what happened in the stadium, and that in itself is uh, a wonderful progress to, uh, to justice in Chile. Because other people will be able to find a certain uh, amount of justice for their, their, their loved ones who were killed there. But uh, I, I must say that during the trial, there was so much evidence uh, against Barrientos so much evidence and so much lying on, on the part of uh, the people who were defending him and the witnesses. I mean, incredible, just, just easily proved mm. lies, uh, which were quickly dis dismissed and overcome by our, our lawyer, our wonderful lawyer. Well, he's been Barrientos. Uh, we've known about him for years now, uh, around seven years, I should say. Um, many conscripts have. Uh, I mean, he's been denying having been in Chile stadiums, and he's been, you know, uh, um, uh, the evidence presented in this in 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 this uh, trial, and also all the previous investigations that have been going on in Chile have put them in the stadium with a command responsibility in the stadium. Uh, and this has been confirmed, you know, um, and um, 
and no officers who have command responsibility in a situation like that during that week, uh, 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 that, that specific week, you know, uh, uh, just after the coup in Chile, uh, be, uh, can say uh, they they didn't know anything, uh, and that they, I mean, they've been uh, constantly denying everything, you know, that happened in the stadium. And also, basically, he's been denying having even been there in that week. Well, we're, we're also joined by Dixon Osborne, the executive director of the Center for Justice and Accountability, who tried the case against uh, uh, Pedro Barrientos. Uh, Dixon Osborne, could you tell us who was Barrientos, what was his role, uh, and, uh, and what were you able to establish uh, in the trial? Yes, and good morning. Uh, Barrientos was a former lieutenant under Pinochet. And what, uh, what we were able to show in the court uh, was in direct contradiction to what Barrientos claimed, which is that he didn't know Victor Jara, that he had never been in the stadium. We had one of the conscripts who testified very chillingly that Barrientos bragged not just once but many times that he's the one who shot and killed Victor Jara. We had other conscripts who identified Barrientos as being in Chile Stadium and having command responsibility there, uh, performing a wide variety of duties and therefore having responsibility over the events at Chile Stadium. We had uh, civilians. Uh, we had a, a former student uh, from the university where Victor taught, who identified uh, that Victor was uh, assaulted, beaten badly at the university when the military laid siege to it. And we had another witness who identified Victor's body tossed outside of Chile Stadium. Uh, uh, so through and through, we presented more than a dozen witnesses and significant evidence of what transpired in the days following the Pinochet coup, and specifically what happened to Victor Jara. You know, in 2012, I got a chance to travel to Spain and interview Francisco Estebedia, the forensic specialist who exhumed the bodies of both ousted President Salvador Allende of Chile and singer Victor Jara to determine the nature of these deaths. Um, I asked him to tell us what he discovered about Victor Jara's murder. What happened in the case of Victor Jara is that he was at a university in Santiago, arrested there, and witnesses confirmed that. Then we believe he was brought into a locker room. The military knew who he was. He was a popular person. He ended up with a single bullet wound through the back of the head and with over 50 broken bones throughout his body that we determined were caused by what looked like machine gun fire que seguramente se han producido en un segundo tiempo. After he died, they fired many, many shots at him, and then dragged the body out into the streets where people would find it, and think perhaps that it had been a gunfight between the authorities and others. What happened to Victor Hara is similar to what happened to other people who disappeared in that period of time. The bodies were found on the streets and brought into the morgue where they were identified. This was very common at the early stages of the dictatorship. Later, probably due to their international political reputation, the disappeared were still being killed, but the bodies were hidden in mass graves, mines, throwing them into the sea and other places. That was Francisco Estebería, the forensic specialist who exhumed the bodies of both uh, uh, Salvador Allende, the president who died in the palace September 11, 1973, and Victor Jara. Dixon Osborne, can you talk about how significant this case is in Florida and what will happen to Barrientos? It's a very significant case. This is the first time that the Jara families had their day in court, and uh, for a court, uh, a jury of six individuals was able to find somebody liable and responsible for the torture and murder of Victor Jara. Uh, I think this is not only significant for the family, as they have said, but uh, for so many uh, victims and survivors who are continuing to look for truth and justice in what happened under the Pinochet coup. Uh, what happens next for, for Barrientos? Now, this was a civil lawsuit. It's not a criminal lawsuit. What the jury found is that he was liable. 
uh, and they awarded damages. Uh, the next step will be to enforce that judgment uh, to the extent that we can. But what about the criminal case in Chile? If Chile has been seeking his extradition, why has the U.S. government not uh, extradited him? That's a good question for the U.S. government. Now, we certainly urge the U.S. government to move forward with extradition at this point. Uh, as you correctly noted, Chile has indicted him. They've requested it. The U.S. government has moved forward on other extradition requests. Uh, so we hope that the U.S. government will take this request very seriously and move forward. And, Joan Hada, what is your next plan as you head back to Chile? Well, to go on as one has been going for 40 years is to seek justice for all the victims. I mean, th this trial has revealed in a, a very special way what has been hidden for years, because there has been a veil over the history of what happened in the Chile Stadium. And it is our job to force this or the to request and to get together with the relatives of other victims to continue the search for justice for all, and to know from moment to moment what happened in the stadium. It well, has been, ex yeah, it's been extraordinary how all this has been hidden for so long, you know. Well, Joan Hara and Manuela Bunster, uh, thank you so much for being with us, joining us for our, from Orlando, where the decision was handed down on Monday, responsibility for the death of your husband, your father, Victor Hara. And Dixon Osborne, thanks so much for joining us from the Center for Justice and Accountability in San Francisco. Well,